Ricardo Julio Lido, born September 10, 1992. In 2012, Ricky Lido was rated the 11th prospect in his class, ahead of numerous guys that are still in the NBA today. A silky smooth shooter with a natural ability to score and instinct to become a great one in that area. A McDonald's All-American and Jordan Brand participant that had offers from top schools like Yukon, Florida, Indiana, and of course his hometown school Providence. Leaving high school, he was projected to be a top 10 NBA draft pick should everything go as planned. In hindsight, things didn't go anywhere close to as planned and he was lucky to even be drafted in 2013. Here's why. It's your boy JC Stunner Growth. Let's get him. This episode is brought to you by crispcontent.com, a brand and development web service that brings your brand to life through smooth, easily accessible, and professional designs that will take your business to another level. They provide web design, content writing, consulting, brand rejuvenation, SEO and ad services, and pretty much all graphic design needs for your business, whether you're on top of the game or struggling to take the next step. Most importantly, they are affordable and can work with you financially. You don't have to have the biggest budget. You just have to want a design that's going to show the business world how serious and professional you want to be. CrispContent.com, the brand you need. Contact now to get the ball rolling, so to speak. Lido is a 6'7 shooting guard from Providence, Rhode Island. In high school, he attended four different schools over his career and had success at every stop, culminating in him being second team all-conference, an all-American, and on some recruiting services, a top 10 prospect, and others right outside of it. I remember in or around 2012, watching and paying close attention to high school basketball, and all levels of basketball for that matter, and hearing so much about this kid, Ricky Lito. Besides him having a name that had a certain ring to it, watching him, you saw that he was a lot more than that. A scoring guard through and through. Some would even say to a fault. But it was clear that he had the confidence, the talent, the size, and the accomplishments to jumpstart a potential NBA future. Then things went left. Stunt number one, a practice player. Lido's first stunt in his career may have been his biggest. As mentioned, he had his pick of the litter for the most part leaving high school as far as what schools he could go to. No matter the program, I thought he would have success because he checked off too many boxes not to. I wouldn't say perfect, but a really good fit at shooting guard, also having spent some time at the point in prep school. I actually think choosing to stay home and attend Providence over the big name schools on his list was a great decision and barring injury to Chris Dunn and what happened to him at Providence along with Bryce Cotton and Kadeem Batts, that team could have developed into something really special. What happened to Lido at Providence? Well, if you search Ricky Lido's college stats, you would be confused as to why nothing shows up. That's because he never played a single game for the Friars and actually left for the NBA having not done so. Because of him transferring to so many different schools, not having enough credits, and also some unclarity regarding his academic eligibility in high school, the NCAA ruled he could practice with the team, but that he would have to sit out a year in order to get his academics in a foundation that satisfied their requirements. This hurt Lido tremendously because I think had he suited up at Providence, he would have been a lottery pick easily and maybe even as high as top 10, seeing as the 2013 class wasn't very strong. Otto Porter, Cody Zeller, Contavious Caldwell-Pope, Shabazz Muhammad, all were lottery and or top three to 10 picks with Otto Porter being the third pick. Lido would have fit right in, especially knowing the numbers he would have put up as a friar. I wonder if people who are in positions like the ones who make these decisions for the NCAA realize how many futures they affect year to year based on technicalities and opinionated rules they implement. Lido's entire life was based around that ineligible status and that one decision changed his entire family's life in one way or another forever. It would lead to another stunt in his career, 
one that this time was in his control. Stunt number two, I'm out. After the NCAA decided that Leto wouldn't be able to play as a true freshman, all was still not lost for the sweet shooting guard. Yes, not playing for an entire year is rough, trust me, I did the same. But it's also a blessing in disguise if you have the right mindset. He could have sat out that year and used it to get himself in better shape for college ball, better refine his skills, in particular his ball handling and distribution ability, seeing as he was still able to practice with the team, and more importantly, gave himself another year to mature on and off the floor. A lot has been made about his decision making and this redshirt year could have done wonders for him. Not to mention, it would have given him a chance to play, put up numbers, and show scouts that he was a lottery pick like his talent suggested. But Lido decided against coming back to school and instead entered the NBA draft solely on his high school accomplishments and the name he built being as highly rated as he was. I'm sure many people in his corner warned him against making this decision, but in Lido's own words, it wasn't about the money. I never wanted for anything. My grandparents had me, my dad had me, so it was never about the money. It was just decisions, man. It was just decisions, man, whatever that means. He could have easily decided to come back to school, something his father, rest in peace, wanted for him and something he needed looking back at how everything turned out. I wanted him to go back to PC. I wanted him to play. I wanted him to get on the court. Cause I know you get on the court, you've been top 15 pick easy. Why you leave, this and that. He didn't want to leave. I'd be the first one to tell you that. He'll tell you that. He probably won't tell you that now, but he didn't want to leave. It was the difference between him being a second round to undrafted pick to a lottery to late first rounder and having a guaranteed contract for multiple years. He says it wasn't for the money and I believe him. His family wasn't struggling like most kids going through the process, which means he simply left because he wanted to leave. I get it, school isn't for everybody. As a basketball player, you wonder why so many faltered academically. It's because it's just not something everyone's good at. They spend so much time in the gym or working to get where he was as an amateur that school and books is something that's sacrificed. You see so many talented guys that come into the league with zero vocabulary and speaking skills. It's because school wasn't a focus, only something they had to do to get where they are. Clearly, he's one of those guys and returning wasn't an option. He was still drafted, although in the second round with the 43rd pick, and after his rights were traded a few times, he landed with the Mavericks. He bet on his talents, and instead of being a first rounder with contract security, he wound it up in a situation where they could trade or waive him at any time, and nothing to fall back on, which is what happened. Stunt number three, inconsistency. The third most important stunt in the career of Ricky Lito is one I think is a direct result of the previous two. Lito throughout his career in the NBA and D-League has always been knocked for him not consistently making the right decisions on the floor, him not having the production he's capable of having shooting the ball, and also the opportunities he wasn't afforded harmoniously. That's a direct result of not being able to play in college, him not staying another year, and him being drafted in the second round. For picks like Lido, it's hard to string together games living up to your potential when you lack the minutes to do so, the experience, and having to look over one's shoulder, always expecting to be gone the next day after being drafted in the second round and signed by Dallas. In two seasons, he appeared in just 16 games for the team, constantly being sent down to their affiliate Texas Legends D-League team, and finally being waived to make room for Amari Stoudemire in 2015. A month later, he signed with the Knicks and showed some promise, like the game against the Wizards where he had a career-high 21 points and a loss, but was waived again only to return to the D-League. This is unfortunately the course he chose and could have avoided way back to the decision to leave school early. Teams thought he was a good player, but they also viewed him as one-dimensional and not able to affect other aspects of the game outside of shooting. 
At 6'7", he wasn't much of a rebounder, averaging 1.4 for his 28 game career, and didn't show those point guard abilities he did in high school at just .8 in those games. For a second round guy, you have to either be elite in one area or able to do more like becoming a defensive stopper or at least adequate like a Tony Snell who consistently gets opportunity after opportunity because he could guard the team's best guy in spurts. Lido wasn't those things and his NBA career to this point was finished. In 2016, he embarked on his international career where he had more success. He's only 27 years old, but time is ticking for him to be able to return to the league. To do so, he'll need to show improvements to his all-around game, but as fast as prospects are jumping to the NBA, that chance may be all but over. All in all, I think to use Lido's words, decisions played a huge role in his ability to stick around and stunted his growth possibly forever. He still had a solid career story and who knows what can happen. Keep working, keep improving, and continue to play the game you love until it's over. Much respect, but for these reasons, his growth was stunted. It's your boy JC, Stunted Growth, and I'm out.